Today's episode is sponsored by our good friends at EGS Expert Grading Services, the Gen X place to get your comics graded and encased, shipping nationwide. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Codename New to Vero 2. Hi, I'm your presenter, Shabu Argu. We're going to do our first EGS unboxing for 2022. And boy, do we got an amazing lineup for you. Like I've been saying in previous episodes, EGS is like a work of art. The way you get custom labels. No other grading company offers that wonderful, unique characteristics. I enjoy it so much so that I have EGS books hanging on my wall. And those are the books that attract the most attention when people come and visit me. It's just amazing what EGS does with this and it just pops automatically. So I'm not hung up on the grades and numbers and all that stuff. I really love how EGS books just call out for attention and even the novice people have no idea are drawn to EGS books. I tell people all the time that EGS is kind of like how Amazon was back in the early days. There used to be a point in time where you could buy Amazon stocks for less than $20 a share. Yeah, that sounds stupid, right? Well, this dumb guy bought two Amazon stocks way back when he was still in his college days. And I'm held on to those stocks uh, until like, you know, all the way until present day. I'm never going to sell them uh, unless something drastic happens. But the point of the matter is that, you know, at the time, Amazon was, oh, they're never going to work. They're never going to succeed. They're just a book company. They're not going to offer anything. How can they compete with the big boys? Well, Amazon proved everybody wrong to now in time, they own the freaking planet. Okay, so before I dive in, I'm just going to review some books in previous episodes. And again, I apologize to my regulars, you know, because everybody, they've seen this already. But for some of you new guys, this is what I'm talking about. And we're going to start off with a bang, with uh, Venom number one. Let me see, get that glare out. Oh, there we go. Venom number one. And again, if you could see, like, he has the symbiote costume on top. I get, this is a new stand edition. Yes, they got a 6.5. And the point of the matter is these foil covers that were popular in the 90s, they're impossible. Once they get, like, those tick marks and stuff like that, it's impossible to get those out, but who gives a rat's ass? This thing, this book gets so much attention when people visit, it's amazing. Um, it's just beautiful. And yes, I do have a, you know, CGC 9.4 of the same issue, or I did have it and I, I got rid of it because I kept this one. Sounds bonkers? Well, that's because the way this freaking thing looks. Amazing, and it's a new stand variant. So this 6.5, you know, down the road, it means a lot, so who cares? It just looks freaking cool. The next book we're gonna look at, and this is the book I'm the most proud of, is G.I. Joe issue number 22. And this is the first camo label in history, only offered by EGS. This book displays wonderfully the first appearance of Roadblock and Duke, monumental issue. Um, it's just one of those things everyone talks about issue number 21. Let's forget about no, issue number 22. So having a camo label on a G.I. Joe, look how it just blends seamlessly with the cover itself. It looks like it's just an extension of it. So that's why these books are displayed is because they're freaking art. And the last one we're going to review is G.I. Joe issue number 146. And you got the somewhat old school G.I. Joe symbol on there. Um, these, again, the later runs in G.I. Joe's, the fan base knows that they had very low print runs. So these, you know, around issue 135 or so, it started to get slim pickings for G.I. Joe issues. Like you just saw a big decrease in the print run for these issues. So that's why it's advantageous to get these um, Marvel issues. And again, this one just displays amazing. So that's a quick recap of what we featured in previous episodes. So let's start off with the new shit. Now, again, this is a lot of review to my regulars, but 
EGS is Overstreet compliant and authorized to carry out Overstreet guidelines. And because of that, they're accepted to be sold in such prestige auction houses like Heritage, uh, Preston, I think that's the other one, and Tiffany. So they're accepted. And as a matter of fact, EGS actually graded an amazing fantasy number 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man. So they had the distinct honor to add that in their bucket list. And that is a big feat. When you get recognized by the auction houses to be able to facilitate said tradings, um, that's a big, big thing. And the fact that EGS is authorized to carry them out and uh, offer to be put into those services is a big bonus. The other thing I like about EGS is that each issue gets a certificate of authorization. Uh, you know, this is just a cool little extra tidbit, but to have a tangible piece of paper that accompanies greater notes as well. So this thing has the, you know, the grade, the, what it is, and also greater notes. So this is amazing thing to have. And for us Gen Xers that love tangible shit, you know, just having this piece of paper is pretty freaking cool. You don't have to go all over the fucking internet to looking for what the hell, why did I get this grade? you have an explanation right there. And because of these types of grading notes, you actually get better when you purchase, pick up books. You could look at a book and start getting knowledge to, hey, I could estimate this to be around maybe a nine or maybe a seven, what have you. All right, so with that aside, let's kick off with the first book EGS sent back. And that is Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, the first issue in the uh, David Avalon run that concluded about a couple a year or two ago and again this is what did it look at that you got the stars and stripes and it just blends seamlessly with the cover art regulars know that I'm a big fan of Elvira as well you're going to see a few Elvira books but that's a tough task like you know what type of label will go complement the issue and the character and that's what EGS does they just they get a theme and they try to make it blend in with the book, your book. So I think that's a dedicated, a testament to the dedication and customer service EGS offers. And this book came out beautifully, 9.4. This is the photo variant, obviously, of Elvira. And in that whole series, I targeted all the photo variants. Um, but again, this book looks amazing. And I'm just, I just want to try and bring it a little bit closer. But just those attention to detail is why I'm a big fan. And the fact that these books are thin, you can hand them on the wall and not worry about, you know, falling and breaking the slab. You do with other companies. And believe me, I've learned the hard way. So the cool thing about this, as you see, is I put those 3M uh, combat strips on it, just locks into place and you're good to go. This is like a work of art right there. So this is the first book. The next book we're going to feature from EGS had me flipping through the moon. And that is G.I. Joe issue number 150. Up oh, this, we're coming to the end of the iconic Marvel run, and 150 was a milestone, the last milestone of the Marvel run. And with this one, EGX put in, I have the first distinct honor of having the first Hooded Cobra Commander label on a comic. That is freaking cool. So you're seeing the first, you saw the first camo label, now you're seeing the first uh, Hooded Cobra Commander label on a comic. And boy, was this an amazing uh, issue to go down. What is it, Slam Dance? That's something with Slam Dance as the title. And Slam Dancing is such a 90s thing, it's just, it was hilarious. The fact is we see Snake Eyes' face, or his prosthetic face, so to speak, in this issue. And we also see... Um, the Baroness and Snake Eyes all being brainwashed in the brainwave scanner going back on the Cobra side of the fence, which is actually is relevant to the current story arc in IDW's G.I. Joe with the return to Cobra Island. So again, the fact that Larry Hama is kind of continuing his G.I. Joe a real American hero and we're like just from then to now, 1994 to 2022. That is freaking amazing. And this book came out beautiful. It's a double issue. So again, it just looks and presents beautifully. 
I'll have pictures on the side at the end so you can look at it in better detail, but no other grading company does this. And it behooves me for fans to, you know, continue to support the big corporate CGC. This is a fan-owned business that went went to the went through the process becoming a grader, went through all of that. And we have to support efforts like this in order for comics to succeed now and the future when you pass it down. That's why I'm a big supporter of EGS, just like how Amazon was. You know, it's you're growing with the company. That's what makes this fun. And, you know, not following the big trends, not following the masses. You're like a punk rocker, you know, just it may sound like weird, but it's still beautiful music at the end. And I am a big fan. I love this shit. Um, just the fact that people that have no business they're knowing or know very little are drawn to these books because of these custom labels. What an amazing feature. Okay, the next book we're going to feature should make you feel kind of funny, if you know what I mean. And that is Red Sonia number one, the photo variant with cosplayer Tabitha Lyons. Um, I, I didn't know who she is or what have you, but she's on Instagram and she's a big cosplayer. But again, this is a beautiful done cover, obviously. But uh, the fact that, you know, you got the Red Sonia right here. I'll put a picture up, but you know, you got Red Sonia and the color scheme just blends again seamlessly with the book. That's what make these such a wonderful art. And it, again, I like this and you won't get in trouble with the misses. It's comic book related. So, hey, anyway, I just like how they did that. And again, they knocked this out of the park. So Red Sonia, a pretty new book that just came out a few months ago. That's the other thing, your turnaround time. You know, two to three months compared to the big corporate CGC, four to eight months, and getting treated like a number. Who the hell wants to be treated like a number? Like, they're doing you a favor when it should be the other way around. We're doing them a favor by giving them business. And EGS makes you feel like a valued customer. They are 110% customer service driven they stand by their product. They go the extra mile. They care. They put this much detail and thought into their labels where, you know, CGC is just pff, next, pff, next, pff, next. Who the hell wants to be that? You know, yeah, great. But now is the time for us as a fan base to get behind a company that one of us founded and that we're going to be a part of this company now and in the future and watch it grow and develop. That's what makes this exciting to be a part of. So the second to last book that EGS knocked out of the park was the 2016, um, what's her name? Willa Wilson's Ms. Marvel number one. And this book is, again, I talked about it in other episodes, how Marvel is basically putting their support behind a young Avengers squad. Characters like uh, Speed, Wicked, uh, Kate Bishop, you know, Suri, Riri Williams, and Kamala Khan is going to be one of them. She has her own Disney Plus series coming out. So again, this is a character that a lot of Gen Xers may not be familiar with, but should definitely be behind. And of course, I'm a big fan of Ms. Marvel because she's of Indian... Pakistani descent. So the fact that we have a superhero, a girl, you know, a lot of girls can identify with. You don't have to be of that ethnicity. We see it's like visiting Spider-Man again. That's what's cool with this character, those teenage angst. And then on top of that, you know, being from immigrant parents and, you know, growing up and going to school in America, it's just a wonderfully done character. And the fact to have the first issue this is not her first appearance but this is her first solo uh issue so this is a significant book a key to definitely pick up and i love how if you see egs again just like they kind of reverse the way the colors are for the cover so they have the darker purple then going into the lighting and then of course her symbol on both sides this is a wonderfully done book a key book 
that I'm ecstatic to have in my collection and hang up in that wall with great pride. So, Ms. Marvel number one. Okay, since we started this episode featuring an Elvira book, we're going to end it with featuring another Elvira book. This is the first issue of the recent Elvira meets Vincent Price. And again, another home run job by EGS. With this, I love the detail in this cover art, uh, the label. They put the popcorn, and if you see, we have the dead hand coming out of the popcorn tub to, I guess, Goose, Cassandra Peterson, Elvira, I don't know. But those little details, every book that EGS does is unique. Did you hear that? Every book has a unique personal touch that you do not find in any other company, period. So that's why it's good for the fan base, fan base to support and grow with such companies because this is a reflection of us as a community. We're gonna grow with this company. It's very important to make sure that all the companies are on the same page and have this conduct the same standard for the overall health and stability of comic grading. EGS is someone that spent their time, went through all the processes, got the authorization to carry out overstreet guidelines, is recognized by all the big auction houses that his books can be sold in their establishments. These are all the benchmarks you needed. And again, with these slabs, I mean, the thing is that slabs require a U.S. patent. Each, each one of these grading companies has a patent on their particular slab. In order to get a patent, you need to have some sort of capital. It takes time to research, design, create, submit it to the U.S. Department of U.S. Patents, and then mass production of said product or goods. That's what makes it, you're a part of that, and you're growing. It's a reflection of you and our community. So that's why I'm a big fan and supporter of EGS. Just like how I said about Amazon, you're growing with the company, and you're making an investment in that company. And that's why I strongly encourage, you know, send five books, send a few books, you know, be a part of that. It's beneficial to everybody in the community and the end results speak for themselves, guys. I mean, these books are phenomenal and they're the ones getting all the attention, not the other books that are from the, the big corporate CGC. People will just walk by them. This, hey, that looks pretty cool. I get that all the time when people visit. So I wanted to end by saying that. Thanks for joining me. Stay tuned for more. If you are interested, click on the links below. If you want to see more earlier unboxings, check out those episodes. Visit EGX on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and they will be more than happy to answer your questions. They are a consumer based company driven by giving out the best in customer service. Their turnaround time is probably two to three months compared to CGC's four to eight months if you're lucky and you don't get treated like a number. The, you know, CGC has become where they want you to feel like you're, they're doing you a favor when it should be the other way around. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, you know, we'll do your books for you. Should be grateful. No, 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 no. We are the consumer. We're the ones that dictate things. And this is a very important lesson for not just young, but uh, not just old, but young uh, co collectors as well. So click on the links below, and we'll see you in the next episode of Codename New Tibera Two. This is Shibu. Are you signing off?